What is up my fellow mobile gamers? In today's video, we got our best beginner's guide for global launch day on Warhammer 40K. Tacticus, subscribe to channel, thumbs up this video for more amazing mobile gaming content. We've got some talking points to the side. I will have timestamps down below for every single thing that we are covering. This is gonna be a long video, so let's jump into this. First thing we are gonna go over is how to power up your character. There's a lot of information thrown at you once you click on a hero. First thing we're gonna talk about is your hero's level, which is dictated right here in the middle. You'll see for this character, Character, we have them at level 15. Now the hero's level actually doesn't affect their main stats. So it doesn't matter if your hero is level 15 or 20 or whatever, it doesn't affect their HP, their attack power, or their armor. Your hero's level does two different things. First, it determines how high your hero's skill level can go. The second factor that a hero's level plays when you need to equip items in order to power them up or rank them up. So down below, you'll see we have six different items that we need to equip to this hero. If we take a look right here where my mouse is pointing, this character is currently an iron rank two. So once we apply all six upgrades to them, we can rank them up, which will increase their overall stats, like their HP, their attack power, their armor. Now there will be some times where you'll click on one of these items and you'll try and apply it, but it'll say that your character needs to reach a certain level. Next up, since we are here, we might as well talk about ranking up our characters. Now this is the main way and the easiest way to really increase stuff like their HP and their attack. You're gonna need different items for different characters and you can get these just throughout the game. In the bottom, it'll show a little picture icon. This is the material that will drop from that level. And it is not a guaranteed drop, it is a random drop. Click the little dice icon above it. It'll even give you a percentage breakdown. So it says a possible reward. You have a 33% chance of getting this reward anytime you win the battle. Now, if we click on a different level and we click on the dice, you'll see that now for this item, we have a 60% chance of getting it. So some materials are more rare than others and they are harder to drop from the level. So because of that, it is very, very important that you three star all the levels. So that way you gain the ability to raid that level for the materials because you might not get that item to drop your first time. And then you're just gonna come in here and the little raid icon will pop up and you just click raid and then it'll just randomly raid it. Sometimes you'll get the drop. Now the two biggest bottlenecks you are going to face from raiding a level, first you're going to need raid tickets. So if you don't have raid tickets, you cannot raid the level and you're gonna have to manually play it. And the second problem that you will face is the fact that you can only win on a level 10 times per day. So you can't come in here and farm the level endlessly. The levels that drop the hero shards are your number one priority. Now, when you do have all six material pieces acquired and you rank up your character, it will increase their stats. But even if you just put on one piece of material, you still will get a stat increase. You'll see that once we apply this to our character, it will increase their armor stat by six. The next most important thing is ascending your hero. So you're gonna need to acquire a certain amount of their hero shards in order to ascend them. You're also going to need orbs as well. Now there's different orbs for different factions. For this example right here, this character has an Imperial orb because they are from the Imperial faction. And then depending on the rarity, there are different rarity orbs. So for this instance, we need a rare Imperial orb. Then there can be an epic Imperial orb. So if we take a look at a different character, if I was to ascend them, you'll see that we need an epic chaos orb. Now, once you ascend your character, it will increase their star level and it can also have the potential to increase their rarity. The easiest way to look at the ascension information for a hero is to click the little eye next to their rarity. So right here, this character is an uncommon. If we click the eye, this will give us a breakdown of character progression, and then their rarity will get bumped up to a rare. You'll see that their max level will now be 26 their max rank increases. You'll see that their health, damage, and armor will increase by 10%, and you can just kind of go along and look through this yourself for all your different heroes. Also, increasing their rarity not only will unlock certain skills for the character, but it will also give you the ability to put different pieces of gear on your hero. Your heroes can have three different pieces of gear, 
a weapon, a shoulder piece, which is kind of like their armor, and then finally an item that boosts their crit. So for this hero, you'll see that I cannot put a crit boosting item on them because I need to ascend them to rare to unlock this slot. Next thing I wanna mention is that pretty much everything in this game is clickable and it will give you a description of everything. So you can come into this menu and just click on everything and it'll tell you what it does. You'll see this is our health, this is our armor and you can literally just read everything our damage it gives you a breakdown of how damage works against armor your hero's movement your physical attack your melee attack your ranged attack we have our crit percentage and then if we take a look in the top right corner different heroes will have different traits we click on this icon, you'll see when attacking with a ranged psychic attack, this unit uses smite and deals 50% of that damage to a random enemy adjacent to the target. So just look at everything. I'll look at all of the icons, click on everything and read everything. You need to read. If you don't like to read and you don't read anything in the game, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage. Click on everything, read everything that's in the game. All right, next thing we need to talk about is the gotcha system because this is ridiculously important and people are gonna be very confused about this at the beginning. You wanna always do a 10 pull because a 10 pull will give you a guaranteed character unlock. Now, if you already have the character unlocked, then you're going to get hero shards. Regardless though, you should always do a 10 pull. So whether it be saving up your black stones until you get 3000 or saving up your requisition scrolls until you get 10 of them. Now, this is the thing that I need to talk about. Now, as you play the game and complete quests and different various things, you're gonna get these requisition scrolls. All as they are is just a token to do a pull from the gotcha system. It can be hard to save up 10 of these to do the 10 pull for a guaranteed character unlock. And this is not the same as doing a pull with the black stone. So they are two different things. So you can't save up like five of these requisition scrolls and then try and use your black stones as the difference. It's either one or the other. You either do a 10 summon with 3000 black stone or you do a 10 summon with 10 scrolls. So because of that, if you go to your daily deals, sometimes you will see instances where you can buy requisition orders for an amount of black stones. This isn't a deal, you're not getting a deal, but what it's doing is it's letting you buy the requisition order scrolls so that way you can acquire 10 faster. So for instance, let's say that I had seven of these saved up and I needed three more to do a 10 pull. Well, here we go. In the shop, I can buy three of these scrolls for 900 Blackstone, which is equivalent to doing three pulls. I'm going to get it in that requisition token form. But once I go ahead and I buy this, I will then have 10 of those tokens and then I can do a full 10 pull and get a guaranteed character unlock. And since we're here talking about daily deals, the next most important thing you can do is you can watch an ad to refresh these deals. Now this is ridiculously important early game, especially if you're free to play and you're struggling to get materials to rank up your heroes. There's gonna be certain items that you cannot even acquire because you haven't reached that level yet, or they might just be ridiculously hard to get because there's a very low percentage chance for it to drop. All you gotta do is come into the daily deals, watch a 30 second ad, let this refresh the entire market and you can get some really good deals in here. You can get really good gear for your characters. You can get orbs in here, requisition orders, materials to rank them up, XP tomes to increase their levels. Always, always come in here and refresh this as much as you can. Just watch the ad. I wouldn't waste my Blackstone on this unless you're a whale. There is a limit to how many ads you can watch to refresh this though. I believe it's like around five or six. The next thing I need to talk about is the missions. Important because as you're progressing through the game, sometimes you will have timed missions pop up. These need to be your number one priority because they are timed. They'll give you really good rewards, usually some hero shards. Step, I wanna talk about some of the different heroes that are really strong in this game. Most importantly, two different ones, the healers and the summoners. Any hero in this game that has the ability to heal your teammates 
is so strong. I mean, they, they're, they're irreplaceable. They can carry you a long way, but most importantly, the best healer currently in the game is Isabella. There is an event that will pop up to unlock her. She is one of the best heroes in this game. She not only has the ability to heal herself and all adjacent friendly units, but she also has the ability to revive a random friendly Imperial character and up to two friendly Imperial summons. This is so important when you get to those really hard boss stages because a lot of the bosses are ridiculously strong. They'll be one-shotting certain characters on your team and then you won't be able to get that three star and you need to get the three star, especially on the boss levels. That way you can farm the hero shards. And if you resurrect a hero that was already destroyed, as long as all of your heroes are alive at the end, you still get three stars, so it doesn't matter. And then the second most important heroes are any hero that has the ability to summon minions. Early game, this guy right here is going to be your best hero in this game. He has the ability to summon duplicates of himself based on the amount of turns that has gone by. So if two turns goes by, that means he can summon two clones of himself. Three turns go by, he summons three clones of himself. Also extremely tanky because he has a lot of armor as well. Now I wanna jump into a match really quick and just talk about the terrain. It can have a huge impact on the end results of your battle. Units that are in tall grass will take two fewer hits from incoming ranged attacks down to a minimum of only one. Next important thing is enemies that are adjacent to you cannot do ranged attacks. So if I put my character here, he has to do a melee attack. Now this is very important because certain characters will do more damage if they do a ranged attack as opposed if they do a melee attack. Next thing you'll notice is the razor wire right here and right here. Flying units are not stopped by razor wire. That's really important to understand. Also, you don't want to end your turn with your character in the razor wire because they will take additional damage from the enemy. Probably the most important part of the terrain is the fact that higher ground will yield you more damage. If we were to take our hero down here and we move him right here on the bottom, you'll see that we are doing 111 damage now if we put him on higher ground and do our attack you see that the attack damage now goes up to 146 damage so you always want to have that high terrain advantage whenever you are doing battle it is so important next extremely important thing is that if your character dies they only receive half the amount of xp they would as opposed to if they survived this is very important when you're trying to level up your hero and maybe you're out here grinding for xp you don't want to have your characters get destroyed because if they do you're missing out on a ton of extra xp some heroes have abilities that can move enemies around the map and this is super duper important and you should really look out for this especially when you're trying to knock your enemies into stuff like the razor wire or just position them in certain ways to get more of an advantage for say something like an aoe attack for our sniper guy we have his special ability does a bunch of damage and then pushes the enemy back one hex tile bam you see that we just pushed him back one tile now let's say that there was barbed wire right there that would be really really good for us and then i would go ahead and have the rest of my team attack them because he's on the barbed wire and he would take additional damage so really look out for trying to manipulate the battlefield and push enemies onto certain tiles to get that advantage that is pretty much it for today folks super duper long video a lot to cover hopefully you enjoyed it Stay happy, stay safe, my friends. I'll see y'all later. Peace.